Hello everyone. Okay, it's time to start having a look at this uh, mixer that I bought uh, second hand a while ago. And uh, yeah, I uh, it's uh, I didn't pay much for it, so uh, it's, if it's not working, it's uh, not the end of the world. But uh, it would be fun to see if if I can get it uh, up and running. Uh, because I'm going to use this uh, as a sort of mixing console for my uh, for my uh, Eurorack and uh, drum machine and stuff. All right, so uh, yeah, this is a Mi uh, Mackie uh, 1202 uh, VLZ, and um, I was looking for a 14 or maybe 16 channel uh, version first, but I realized that they were quite big and I don't have much desk space, so I had to, uh, to and then I found this and I thought that, okay, that's uh, in terms of size, it's perfect for what I need, so um, I'll give it a try. All right, so it seems like this one has been working. <laughs> Uh, there's a sign here on the side that says uh, that this have been checked uh, in 2017. So yeah, five years ago it was working today. So I'm going to hook up uh, my drum machine just as a signal source and check out all the inputs. Start with that. And after that I will check the aux send and returns uh, if they are okay that's fine I will, I will not check all the the inserts and um, and stuff uh, on the back and uh, i don't have any uh, condenser microphone so i'm not so interested in the, in the phantom power anyway i have hooked up my um, drum machine here and uh, to the two first inputs and i have also attached uh, my headphones to the headphones jack here all right, so let's uh, turn on the power. Okay, looking good so far. We have a power LED. And uh, if we try to check the levels. We have good levels, I think. Okay. All right. Let's check the other channel as well. Yeah, seems to work. And the panning seems to work. I don't know if the phone can pick it up, but um, sounds in stereo to me. Next step is to check the microphone inputs and I will do that uh, using a dynamic uh, microphone like this one. Testa, testa, testa. Okay, so this is what I have found so far. Um, the solo button on uh, channel 5.6 seems to be a little bit uh, crusty, or there are uh, 
issues when uh, pressing and repressing it. And um, also the, the pan pot on channel 9 and 10 needs... Uh, I had some scratches or some strange noise when I was uh, turning that knob, so it's probably oxidized or or hopefully not worn out. Uh, and in general the pots are very dirty, so they, the uh, feeling of, of the pots are, are a bit different between uh, between different, different channel blocks. And uh, so uh, they have, but everything else seems to work, the EQs are fine, and the trim pots are okay, and uh, uh, the low cut filters and uh, microphone inputs works as well. So that good, that's good. And the fader pots, I was a bit worried about them uh, because they normally get the most uh, wear and tear. Uh, but they are okay, all of them. So, right, so uh, the next step is to start checking the um, uh, effect loops. And uh, to do that, I will simply insert a signal into the uh, aux return of um, the different channels and see if I get something out. And then I will uh, just uh, turn up the, the gain on the return here. And uh, aux1 return seems to work. And return2 seems to work as well. Testing the aux send is a little bit more tricky, so uh, what I will do is uh, basically make a short circuit effect loop here by sending out, uh, taking the aux send and just uh, putting it back on, on in the input. And uh, aux one is uh, pre fader, so I should be able to do this with all the faders uh, in. Uh, attenuation uh, position so uh, okay so let's see if this works yep seems to work fine Okay, so testing AUX2, it's uh, a little bit more complicated because uh, AUX2 is uh, post fader. So I have to turn up the faders to get an, anything sent to the effect loops. And uh, yeah, one easy way of testing this, I guess, is to just use another channel. And now I have to think. I don't have any master uh, send, uh, master uh, knob for for uh, for AUX2, so it will just send out full level. And if I turn up the faders, then I will of course hear, hear that in the this, those channels in the mix. So what I will do is that I will solo this channel, like so, and uh, turn that knob up. A little bit so I can see it on the meters here. All right, let's see if this works. Yeah, looks like uh, AUX2 is um, working. Good. Uh, this is a little bit awkward to test uh, on camera, so I will I'll do that. On, uh, the, I'll do the rest of the channels off camera. Okay, time for a quick summary. Uh, I have found that on uh, the pot for for AUX2 on channel 11, 12 had was a little bit oxide, and also the the pre post uh, switch. I, I forgot to mention this that the AUX um, uh, send is actually possible to um, put at uh, post fader. Also, you have the switch, then you can switch between. And so I had to check that for uh, for all the all the channels as well. 
and then I found out that this switch has a little bit oxide I think I hope it's not uh, mechanically broken or, or uh, anything it's uh, that it's just uh, something that I can that I can clean out the next step is to tear the, this down and start cleaning everything uh, clean up the pots and switches and uh, all the tape uh, glue residue and, and dirt <laughs> that is uh, collected everywhere. Okay, so I have uh, done a tear down now, and um, the, as you can see, there are three PCBs. Uh, uh, this is the back panel uh, with uh, the insert jacks and the uh, balanced outputs and the power supply. And I see that uh, there are two capacitors that are, that are glued to uh, to the PCB with a hot glue. I have to fix that. Okay, so uh, the main the main ICs that are used is basically everything is is uh, built around the um, JRC forty five sixty op amp. So there's a dual op amp in this surface mount package, and uh, it's used everywhere in in this design. And it's actually used on the output stage here as well, but it's a different package, so it can uh, withstand a higher uh, power dissipation. And uh, the metering uh, output is made, uh, this is a standard uh, design. Okay, I thought that it was a good idea to have a quick look at the schematic diagram of the metering circuit. If we start at the bottom here, we have two precision full wave rectifiers that are uh, receiving the, uh, the audio signal and rectifying it, storing it in the, uh, this capacitor here. So basically what we have here is an envelope follower. If we continue to look at the circuit we see at the top we have uh, the minus supply and we, we have a row of LEDs that are connected in serial. Down at the bottom here we have the plus supply that feeds two constant current generators. One for each leg, left or right channel. And if we look closer at this circuit, we see that uh, the input signal is going to all the plus connections on the comparators here. And we have a resistor ladder with thresholds that corresponds with the DBU values that you see here on the meter. So what will happen when the input signal is zero, basically, and it, or is lower than the first threshold? In that case, the comparator will compare these two inputs and if the minus is more or higher than, than the plus side, in that case the output will be clamped to the minus supply voltage. That basically means that this point here is short circuited to this one. And if we have a constant current generator down here, that means that we are basically sinking all the current into ground or or the minus supply, to be more correct. Okay, what happens when the level rises here and we uh, suddenly are above the reference voltage? In that case, the output of the comparator will go high impedance, which means that the next one will be the one that short circuits the rest of the LEDs in this uh, bar. And that means that there will flow current through this LED down into the minus supply here in the next comparator in this ladder and the rest of the LEDs will of course be will not be lit. Okay and this goes on 
and uh, as the voltage rises more and more LEDs will uh, get current from this current uh, uh, generator and, and light up. And when the top is reached here, of course, all of them will be lit. Now, you may ask yourself, okay, this is a uh, kind of complicated. Why, why doing it like this? Why use a, cur a constant current generator to generate uh, the, the current to the LEDs? But uh, that is actually very clever because if you we have 24 uh, LEDs here if we were to switch them on and off uh, individually we will have a, quite a big range of currents and the current would switch all the time on and off and uh, at, at different levels and this will cause uh, interference so uh, with this circuit the current actually never changes regardless if only one or if no LED is lit or all of them the current is the same all the time. It's time to put this together again. So let's do that. Alright, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I have started to hook up my gear to it and it works just fine. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.